question is, am I a Scrooge? Unknowingly? I don't think I am. But I'm now starting to think I am. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now and we're kicking off our next Booktuber Picks My TBR series video and this, this, this month's pick is from Chloe at Always Booked who I adore. She skews more towards women's fiction and slightly less smutty romance than I do and she loves Christmas books. So I knew that when I had Chloe pick my TBR I wanted her to pick Christmas books for me because I have not really explored Christmas books like she has. Um, I honestly have read a handful of them and usually it's novellas and series I'm already reading, stuff like that. So I had her pick five books for me to read and obviously however I feel about these five books is not a reflection on her in any capacity. This is 100% on me <laughs> and how I feel about them. I'm mostly nervous because I feel like all of these books are books that are like kind of outside my comfort zone of what I normally would read for Christmas and kind of just like nothing I would have picked for myself. Which is why I do this series. I love having people pick like five books for me to read. Okay, so first we have Christmas Sisters. I'm just gonna tell you the titles and I'll throw up the covers and then you can see the author names. Uh, Winter Streets, uh, Magical Holiday, Skipping Christmas, and then Merry and Bright. So I have never read any of these authors. These are all completely new to me authors, which is really exciting. Um, we're gonna dive in first. I have one of these checked out already and I'm gonna tell you which one. We're gonna start with Winter Street by Alia Hildebrand. Um, I got it on Hoopla. So yeah, we're gonna dive in with that one first and see how it goes. I really, I have no expectations. This one is uh, her first Christmas novel. It's set in Nantucket. She owns an N. This just sounds like a Hallmark movie already, so I'm very, very intrigued. Uh, I don't want to read a ton of the synopsis, so I can kind of go in not knowing too much, but I will be back in who knows how long, and I have updates for you on what I thought of this book. So, I thought, what better way to put me in the mood than to go Christmas shopping? Because I needed to get a couple other things at the store. So we're going to head to Target. I'm going to take you with me while I pick out some new decor for my mantle here. We'll look at my mantle real quick. So my mantle is still a mishmash of like <laughs> cat toy, uh, Halloween stuff slash fall, a random fake flower thing, my shrimp heaven um, poster that is a very niche reference. If anyone gets the reference, you better let me know. Some cute new garlands to put up. I'm trying to like, I already have some from last year, but I would like to get a different color set so I can have like two different options kind of going um, every year so I can like switch it up some. I don't think we're gonna do a Christmas tree this year because I don't know what to do with his kennel um, right now. And I don't feel like moving a chair into the garage currently. And otherwise, like I want the, the, the tree in our living room. So I don't, I don't know. I might get a little tiny baby tree. I don't know, we're gonna go Christmas shopping. I'm gonna listen to Winter Street it's gonna be a fun time. I'm excited. So I just finished Winter Street. And that cliffhanger ending was a lot. The other point I wanted to make is like, as someone who has been with someone who is deployed, communication when things go bad is very um, spotty, to say the least. Uh, you know, you always had to, it really was no news is good news if you knew there was an attack um, or something happened at a place not far from where they were. So that was interesting. Um, what do I think of Christmas Street? So I kind of just blew through it all in a day, as in today, Monday, while I went shopping for some Christmas decorations that were non-existent. Um, Target was wiped out and I'm shocked by it. I don't know, I thought it'd take longer. Um, so yeah, I just finished Christmas Street. Uh, 
I think I'm gonna give it three stars. I am not thrilled with that cliffhanger of an ending of sorts. I think that it was kind of fun because it was about a very honestly messy family that needed to get their shit together, which can be pretty entertaining. I'm not gonna deny that. I, I do think that's an entertaining trope uh, or like series of events. It's like rich people problems. It can be fun when you want an escape, but yeah, I didn't expect as hard hitting of stuff with this, this we got because we had one brother was deployed and something happens nothing like terrible and then um one brother is like doing some awful things on the hedge fund investment market and then the sister is like in a awful relationship and yeah it wasn't it wasn't terrible it's a solid three i i could see myself possibly reading more i think it's pretty well written i'm curious to continue my journey with like true christmas novels because again i feel like I think I'm, I like Christmas novellas, um, and I like Christmas money novellas, but I've never really dived into these kinds of Christmas novels before, so that's kind of been the fun part of this vlog series. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to start next, so I'll update you when I decide, because I've got to film some stuff first. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. I started a book and then I got ready for bed and I realized that I had to wash my makeup off and I was like well we'll just we'll update you now um, I started Merry and Bright by Debbie Maycomber it's really cute so far I didn't like I said I really avoided the synopsis on any of these I didn't want to know too much going in because that's just who I am and um, <laughs> This is really cute so far. It involves a fake dating, not fake dating, um, no, unknown identity, unknown identity situation happening, and it really is quite cute. So we are following Jason and, what the fuck is her name? Shit. Jason and Mary. Of course her name's Mary, come on. Duh, it's a Christmas novella. <laughs> And we're following them and they're talking on this like dating website situation and they are um yes yeah, so they're talking on there and they don't know but they're like kind of mortal enemies at the office of sorts he's her boss she really doesn't like him he doesn't seem to like her either to be honest this is very cute i didn't realize how short a lot of these christmas books are i kind of get why people like them just on that fact alone like i can finish I could finish like two of them in a day no problem like without even trying some of these so that's a nice change of pace and uh yeah i'm gonna go wash my makeup off before i fall asleep all right so i just finished mary and bright by debbie maycomber and i'm shocked i'm shook i don't know i i didn't know if i would like it to be honest with you it has a lot of things i don't like like there's no full payoff in this book um AKA they do not get it on, which is fine. Uh, it also had like punny names, which I don't always love. I'm not gonna lie to you, like and say I do. But her name is literally Mary, like M-E-R-R-Y, and his last name is Bright, and I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't y'all. Um, but I really, really liked it. I think it's like a solid four star read. I think it was a great first Debbie May Maycomber Christmas book to listen to. It was only like four hours on audio, so that helps. It was just nice, sweet, and condensed. I hope my washing machine isn't too loud. Let me go close that door, hold on. The one downside of the upstairs laundry, I feel like, is it's super loud. Okay, so yeah, it was super cute. I quite liked it overall. I think, yeah, I think it's a four star. Like, I really, really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to, um, maybe try some more Debbie May Comer at some point. I, I do think if you've never read her, this might be a good entry point. I mean, obviously it's my first one. Uh, overall, the plot of this is about Mary working a temp job and her boss there is just the worst and has no Christmas spirit or joy. And he, she joined her, <laughs> and then she ends up on a dating website and doesn't use her actual picture and uses a photo of her dog and lo and behold, her and this boss meet on the dating website. 
Obviously they don't know it's each other for a while. She figures it out, refuses to meet with him. Things go from there. It's, it, it reads, honestly, it reads like a Hallmark movie in the best way. I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. Like I like Hallmark Christmas movies and that's what this read like. And it was just very fun. Um, I always love the like, this executive's so tired and has no Christmas spirit and somebody else is just gonna cheer him right up. And I just, it cracks me up, okay? It's because they're, they're, ridic they're ridiculous, right? Like these, these premises. But um, yeah, it was really fun. So Chloe, thank you so much for picking a Debbie Maycomber for me to try since I've never read her before. And now I feel like I have a wealth of options to dive into because I know she's a lot of people's favorite for, especially for Christmas stuff. So next I am going to start reading um, imagine, oh, fuck, I keep messing up this title. I'm going to start A Magical Christmas by Heather Graham. It's the only one I don't have on audio. So I figured if I started it now, we would be in pretty good shape to wrap this vlog up pretty quickly. I am two, two books down. So three more to go. And Skipping Christmas is super short. So I may listen to that tonight depending on how far I get in this, and then just listen to Christmas Sisters tomorrow and wrap this bad boy up. But yeah, I'm excited. I am enjoying this. This is putting me in the Christmas spirit to an extent, even though I know like a lot of these are not books I would necessarily pick for myself, which is the whole point of this project. Like I love having friends or people I know pick TBRs for me because they're all picking books I may not have picked up on my own. And that's always fun. I like to expand my horizons. All right. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. The real question is, am I a Scrooge? Unknowingly? I don't think I am. But I'm now starting to think I am. We've got issues. All right. So... <laughs> I just finished Skipping Christmas by John Grisham and it was fine. So I heard it was really bad and then like some people were like, I love it. And then a lot of people on my Goodreads were like, this book is terrible. I don't know what this piece of hair is doing. Okay. So on my Goodreads, this one has like probably the most varied reviews out of everything. And I think it's like a three, like it's not like it's objectively not bad. I just have major quibbles with the characters. Number one, like why are you overspending at Christmas if you don't want to? Like that's not a part of Christmas. Two, why does this whole town give a fuck <laughs> that they're skipping Christmas? Who cares? This makes me think like when we moved um, from Illinois to Georgia and I was in high and I was in high school, we moved around the holidays. I actually moved to a new school that hadn't taken finals yet and had to retake my junior year finals um, for some classes. Some teachers counted the grades, some didn't, some were assholes, some weren't, obviously. We didn't get decorations up that year and our neighbors assumed we were Jewish because we hadn't put decor up. And I just, again, who cares? It's your choice. Like, I don't, I'm not putting up a Christmas tree this year because we still have peas and like she's still kind of a baby and I just don't want to deal with her climbing up a damn tr Christmas tree all day constantly or breaking a bunch of stuff. I just... <laughs> so the premise of skipping Christmas is the Crank family, since their daughter's going to be gone for Christmas, decide to buy a cruise and go on that and not do anything Christmas related. I really, I really don't think it has to be an end all be all. I think the key here is this doesn't have to be an end all be all situation. You don't have to give everything about Christmas up to then leave on a cruise for Christmas day. I'm a big fan of experiences over items and things, but like you can do the experience for Christmas and still like decorate your house some. Nothing says you have to, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't have to be one or the other. And they're, the whole neighborhood's just like all worked up because he's not gonna put up the dang snowman on the roof and you know, the horror of them skipping Christmas is just like, what? People, people have been skipping Christmas for years. Like, there are plenty of people who literally just can't even afford Christmas. That's like, 
to like this this book reads like weird rich people problems but like also not actually hold on we know his income this guy in today's money would make about $88,000 a year which is nothing to like bulk like nothing to be like oh my god that's nothing but like a decent salary uh and yeah like I just how do I talk about this this is gonna be fun to edit yeah I just I honestly just don't understand the town's obsession with the idea that he was skipping they were skipping Christmas nor like the rudeness of what is the final like the plot twist at the end because what a rude child to just be like hey I'm rolling up and I'm just gonna assume my parents have no plans because I'm not there and everything's going on like normal and like I just little little communication um maybe this book's a two and a half I don't know y'all <laughs> I think it might be a two and a half I didn't like hate it overall it just it hinged on a plot thing that I super hate and that was like a lot of miscommunication and like this weirdly weird idea of an overly nosy town I just think is weird like to me um also I just want to say like I've never seen the movie so there's that maybe I'd enjoy it more than I don't know it wasn't terrible it wasn't the best thing I've ever read I'm indifferent definitely likes the Debbie May Comer way more than this so there's also that uh on to the next book I guess and that was my rant um I don't really have much more to add about skipping Christmas to be honest with you uh I wish I did <laughs>
this book was published in 1996 and I'm not saying we didn't know things weren't okay then I just think we all had a different like uh people had a different perspective on this stuff to an extent um so I'm also trying to view it with that lens that this book is a lot older than we than what I usually read uh so yeah I'm enjoying it so far it's interesting I think I'll be done with it pretty easily this afternoon hello so I finished the last book for this which was a magical Christmas by Heather Graham I keep wanting to call it a magical holiday still even though I've corrected myself countless times uh, I'm coming at you from my new messy bookshelves um we moved walls that they're on which is really exciting you'll see that in a different video at some point I'm sure <laughs> but yeah uh so I finished A Magical Christmas by Heather Graham and I think it's like a high two and a half three star for me I had some issues with some language in this book <laughs> unsurprising because this is something I always have issues with um the R word is used it's from 1996 but I still feel like we knew better than to use the R word in that book um I also didn't love the setting of the the back history setting of around the Civil War and like some of them were Union soldiers and some of them were Confederate soldiers and that's just always weird I don't know um living in the South obviously there's a lot of interesting notes about the uh, Civil War or as I like to call it the War of Northern Aggression they also comment that it was an economic war and it's like I think people back then knew it was beyond an economic war I don't think there's any question about that and then they try to excuse it to be like well you know because the South uses slavery it was just weird um, I didn't hate it I didn't hate it though I thought it was really well written and I would be interested to read more from Heather Graham maybe something newer by her that I would like more because usually usually we see growth the more authors write uh, so yeah it was very interesting uh, I had so much fun doing this honestly um real quick like I read five books so I read what did I read so I read five books total for this and Chloe did such a good job picking a variety of things that I would honestly never pick up for myself and I was happily surprised by quite a few including you know Mary and Bright by Debbie Maycomer was really cute and delightful I cannot speak to the Down syndrome rep in this around the brother who has Down syndrome nor could I find much as far as reviews on it he's not like super prevalent He's just there a little bit in the story which is fine um but i don't know the like accuracy of it so i can't really speak on it but i can say that like overall this love story was very cute uh it definitely is not ending in anything happening it's just a kiss and it was just still cute it felt like a hallmark movie at the end of the day which seems accurate because i think she has quite a few books that have been adapted into hallmark movies then we have The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan, which I was really surprised I liked so much. I would love to read some more Sarah Morgan after this. Um, Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. I'm not going to read a holiday book by him again, but I have kind of wanted to read The Firm, I think it's called. It's one of the like older um, law, court, law courtroom thrillers, and I know he used to be a lawyer, so I feel like, I feel like that would be an interesting read. All right, and, uh, and Winter Street. I don't think I would really read anything else by Eileen. It, it just was not quite for me at the end of the day. And then last but not least, of course, A Magical Christmas, which I just finished. And I said I would definitely pick up something else by Heather Graham. She has like a paranormal series or something, like Ghost Hunters or something. And I think I, think I would like that a lot more uh, than I liked A Magical Christmas. I was surprised by the ghost. So we'll put it that way. I picked Chloe for this because she loves Christmas books. So on that note make sure you're also subscribed to chloe she is such a delight i adore her uh, i love her content and she's the cutest like her weekly vlogs are great i love like i love to sit and watch her weekly weekly reading vlogs and read so be sure you check her out uh thank you all so much for hanging out with me uh and watching this i hope you enjoyed it if you have a christmas book you think i should read and would like drop it in the comments for me or drop a snowflake emoji uh, because it's getting to be winter and kind of, kind of cold where I live. Not really that cold, but kind of cold where I live. Uh, and I will be back in just a few days with another video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can find links to all these books in the description box. 
including links also to all of my social media. You can find me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find a um, link to the Romance YouTuber Discord, which is where I will possibly be asking for my next round of people to volunteer as tributes to uh, give me a TBR for, for me to read. If you are a booktuber watching this and you're not in that Discord and you want to give me a TBR, hit me up. Uh, I'm very open to anyone giving me one. I just think these are really fun to like explore a different theme and I really asking we'll get away to a place where we